Welcome to another Onshape tutorial. In this video I'd like to focus on the Revolve tool, and not necessarily how to use the Revolve tool, but more specifically how to dimension with the Revolve tool. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch, and what I want to create is a 4 inch diameter, 4 inch tall cylinder. Alright, so we know to make that primitive using the Revolve tool, we're going to use a rectangle. So go ahead and throw that rectangle on there, and I need to think about the dimensions. 4 inches tall, 4 inch diameter. So I'll go ahead and assign a height, 4 inches, and then we'll go ahead and assign the diameter of 4 inches. We'll finish our sketch. I'm going to put in isometric. Let's go ahead and turn off our planes while we're here, and let's revolve that. So revolve this shape around this axis. That doesn't look right. Um, it should be proportionately the same in height as it is in width. Well, let's check it. So I'm going to click on this outside circle, and it tells me down here that I have an 8-inch diameter. Well, that's not what I put on there. I put a 4-inch. Well, you've got to remember the differences between radiuses and diameters. So back here in my sketch, I really didn't want 4 inches, because I've got to remember that this is now a radius of my object. So I needed 2 inches. And if you have a hard time ever doing the math in your head, remember that on shape is a calculator, that I can just go ahead and say 4 divided by 2, and it will go ahead and produce my 2 for me. So let's see what happens now. So I'll go ahead and revolve that shape around the axis, and we'll see if it worked. So I click on my circle, and it now says I have 4 inches. Um, but then why didn't I have to divide the other one? Let's check it. So if I click on the top surface, rotate it and click on the bottom, it says I have four. Well, I didn't divide that one in half. Why did I have to divide this one in half, but not this one? What happened to be that that was the height of my axis? So I do want a four inch diameter cylinder, and that's not going to get any bigger as I revolve it. Only this one is. Um, so it may be tough sometimes to be able to visually see what you want um, without using something like maybe the mirror tool. So I'm going to grab my dimension, just going to throw this over to the other side, and I'm going to use the mirror tool. So I'm going to delete my dimension as if I had never done it. And I'm going to mirror, and the first thing it wants to do is select a mirror line. Well, I need the axis, because mirror works just like Revolve does. So I'm going to click on that line, and then I'm going to highlight everything. Okay, so what's the advantage of that? Well, now when I put on a general dimension from one side to the other side, I can just put four now. I don't have to divide anything in half. It just happens to be when I revolve it, I want to make sure that I only revolve half of it. And it'll give me the same answer. So it's really kind of up to you on how you dimension it on shape, to whether you want to try to keep things as diameters or whether you want to just divide them in half and use radiuses. Right, let's look at another example. Um, so what I want to do here is create a block that has a sphere on it, more at least half a sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and my, create my sketch on my front. I'm going to use a two-point rectangle, and I'm not going to worry about the sphere yet. I just want to create the block that goes in the background. So I can see I have an overall width of three inches, and I have a full height of, it looks like, two. We'll go ahead and finish that sketch, and I'm going to go ahead and extrude that a full distance of one inch. Okay, so great. So now we have the block. What we want to do is put the sphere on top of it, and not just at any location. It needs to be in a specific spot. So I'm going to put a new sketch on the top. I'm going to go ahead and just draw a circle, and we're going to start dimensioning it. So it tells me that it's one and a half inches from the side of the part to the center of the circle. And then I have one inch from the bottom of the part to the center of the circle. Diameter of it is one and a half. So I can click on it and I can go one and a half. All right, so we know to be able to revolve it, I need half of that. And it really doesn't matter right now if I divide it in half horizontally or in half vertically. So I'm just gonna use my line tool I'm going to click on the center, I'm going to get that little, I'm not actually going to click, I'm just lining it up with the center, so I can click on the top of the circle and the bottom of the circle, and as long as it stays black, then it's fine. So yes, I could trim this away if I really wanted to, but I don't need to, because I want to leave this on as a diameter. If it was trimmed, and oops, if I use the trim tool and this was trimmed, 
and I put the dimension on later, then you need to remember that most software packages, every time you have an arc, anything that's less than 360 degrees is going to go on as a radius instead of a diameter. Anything that's a full circle is going to go on as a diameter. So right now we'll just go ahead and leave ours as a full circle. I'll go ahead and finish the sketch. And this time when I revolve, I'm just going to pick half of it around this axis. But I really only want half of it. So I'm going to change it from a full revolve to one direction. I want to change the direction. And I want it to go 180 degrees. And there we go. So we now have a block that has this button or this sphere laying on the top of it. Outstanding. Let's take a look at another example. In this example, we want the exact opposite. Instead of creating a sphere, we want to scoop it out. Kind of like an ice cream scoop, we want to just take a sphere out of the part. So what I want you to remember is that most of these tools aren't just additive. They can also be subtractive. So I can click on Remove. And right now what I'm going to have to do is swap my solution, because I am going 180 degrees, but I want to go 180 degrees into the part. And there we go. So that's awesome. So I now have a sphere missing out of my part, just kind of scooped out of there. And I use that type of thing a lot. So a lot of times I'll use Revolve as an Add, and then sometimes I'll use it as a Remove. So let's go ahead and try another part. And as you can see here, this one is a lot more complicated. There's a lot more to it. And there's not just one way to do it. But the first thing I want to describe is the type of dimensioning that's used. You can see all of these dimensions come to one baseline. And that's one of their names. A lot of times they're referred to as baseline dimensioning. So everything gets referred to um, or referenced back to one edge. It's also known as datum dimensioning. So this bottom, right, this bottom line right now is my datum. So let's get it started. So go ahead and create up my document. And we're going to go ahead and start out somewhere. So I'll we'll start my sketch. And i got to figure out what am I going to draw. Well, I could draw this part here. So I have section viewed this. I have cut it open so that you can kind of see what you would actually draw. Um, so I could just come over and up. I could also have a rectangle here and another rectangle. It's kind of up to you. So I am going to kind of build this out of rectangles first. Okay, something kind of like that, and see if I can't go ahead and start putting my diagonals on there. Okay, so from the base, it goes out to this wide portion, and then it goes up again um, to here somewhere. Then it starts going up, and then it looks like we have one more. Okay, so that is the basic shape, and proportionately, I'm not unhappy with that. Um, I think I've got pretty good proportions as far as what I want right now. So when I put my first dimension on there, um, hopefully everything will kind of twist or change shapes the way it's supposed to. All right, the dimension I want to put on right now is one of the overalls. And I can see I have an overall width right now of one and a half, so diameter of one and a half on this main body, this main cylinder. And then I have an overall height of three, so that's the one I'm going to go with right now because I don't have to divide any of that in half. So from here, to here, and it looks like I drew everything about double too big, so let's just type in 3. Okay, so from here, I should be able to start putting on the dimension. Alright, the ones I'm going to take care of first are the ones that have nothing to do with the revolve. So I'm going to put on the half inch, one and a half, and so on. Excellent. So if I look at my height, everything should be black. So everything should have been taken care of up and down. All right, so now I need to do is take care of all of my side to side. All right, so these are a little bit tricky. I can say I have a half inch on the top, and then I've got a cylinder, so it angles down to this cylinder of 0.75. Then it angles out to 1.5, and then it cuts back into 1. So from here to here, and again, that's not a half inch anymore. That's now 0.25. If you can't think of that, you just type in 0.5, divide it by 2, and it will do it for you. All right, so the next one's going to be 3 quarters, half of that, so 0.375. 
The next one's going to be one and a half. So 0.75. And then the last one, unfortunately it kind of dropped in for me, so I'm actually going to undo that. I'm going to drop this in a little bit more, and then when I put this dimension on, it shouldn't collapse that triangle so much. Okay, great, and then I'll put on the last one. So this should be one inch from here to here, which is really half inch. And again, if you don't want to do that and divide all these dimensions in half, we could have mirrored, picked my mirror line, grabbed everything, and then I could have put on full dimensions from side to side instead. I kind of get out of that habit um, once I can start wrapping my head around the idea of dividing the dimensions in half. Okay, so I could be done. But there's also a hole that goes through here. And so now I've got two options. I could go ahead and revolve this and put a quarter inch diameter through hole all the way through the part. Or I could actually do it right here. Yeah, I could. So I'm going to put a line that goes all the way from the top. Be careful about grabbing that center point because I don't know that that's true. So I'm just going to grab from here and go straight down to the bottom. I'll put on a dimension and it looks like it's going to be 0.25 diameter, so half of that, 0.125. Oh, so it did end up being in the middle. Okay, so what am I going to revolve? Well, i got a whole bunch of things to pick. So remember, when you go to revolve something, extrude something, whatever, especially when you have a complicated shape that has a whole bunch of individual shapes, you can, say, revolve and pick them all individually, or I can just pick the sketch. Unfortunately here the sketch is going to pick some things that I don't want. So now you got to make the decision is it easier to pick the shapes that I want and unpick the shapes that I don't want or is it easier just to pick the shapes that I want and don't pick the other shapes at all. Um, there's more shapes for me to pick so I'm just going to pick the sketch and then unpick these four. Those are the ones that actually make the hole. And when I say revolve around this axis it should give me the part with a hole all the way through it. Okay, so that's cool, but let's see if we've got some of it right. So I'm going to turn these off, and we're going to go ahead and do some dimensioning. Oops, let's turn that sketch off. I didn't need to turn that on. So we can do the same thing. I can now just start clicking on them. So I click here, and it's one. I click here, and I'm one and a half. I click up here, I'm 0.75. Oops, let's try it again. Click here. 0.75, that should also be 0.75, this should be 0.5, it is, and then the last one should be 0.25, great, and then the heights, that should be done, um, I should be able to just click here and here and see that that should be a half an inch, well, I'd have to do some math, because that's two, two and a half, that is correct that it's two, so you can click on anything that you want. So I can click on the bottom and then all the way up to here, and that should be two inches and so on. So you can go through and start checking the part. So awesome. Hopefully you can now create this part, and you've got the gist of being able to put the dimensions inside a revolve.